Hello, my name is Raymond Fernandez, and today I'm here with an old friend and also uh, a football coach back in the year 1990-91, and uh, his name is Mark O'Neill, and I'm going to have him introduce himself and uh, talk about all his involvement here with respect to La Mirada and uh, Mark. You don't have enough time. <laughs> I uh, and thank you for that, Ray, and uh, appreciate you having me here to do this. Uh, I grew up at this park. My parents decided to move to La Mirada when they, when they came out from the East Coast. Uh, they were in Bell Gardens for two years and they moved to La Mirada and they found this place and I thank God they did because because uh, I had so much great things happen here in this town and I was so involved and uh, it was a blessing for me to, to be here. I, uh, they, they bought a house right up the street here, mm -hmm. uh, the entrance of the side entrance here to Castellan mm -hmm. and I was here hanging out since I was five years old. Let's, uh, it's a windy day, windy day today. Let's 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 start from kind of the beginning. You mentioned five years old. Um, take us through the time in your life being here, from five to about the year twenty, and your involvement with the city and the sports and the youth programs, your plays, etc. Okay, uh, Neff Park at that time was run by Southeast Park District, and I would come here as a kid, unsupervised. I guess I asked my sister. She took me a couple times, but. I came as my as just to come to the park, and they had so many activities, beach trips, hobo stew, and I, I just was have so much background in this park. And then as I got older, you know, I, they made me like a safety patrol, and I was helping out doing stuff as a kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I started uh, volunteer coaching here mm -hmm. at at, uh, at the park. We had basketball, flag football, mm -hmm. and uh, so. How I got, old were you around this time? I was started coaching. Uh, a father at Rancho School asked me to help a little league at 13 or 14. I was helping. And then I started coaching here at the park about maybe 14 okay. years old, 15. And then also the barn behind us, the, the carriage as it was referred to, um, you were in plays on stage. Yeah. Uh, when I was a kid growing up, all this part was not part of the park. It was just a little strip on the outside of the park here okay. but then w w the barn actually had animals in it but afterwards when when I was coaching here and then they had a theater La Mirada theater was stationed here in in the in the Neff barn it was renovated for a theater and I was part of it I was in the theater I was I was at a few plays Rumpelstiltskin and, a, and uh, I was a mime and I was they had like a lot of Neil Simon plays and uh, I was in a few plays when I was real young like 15 16 I was part of the La Mirada Theater here. Mm -hmm. Did you ever play water football? Because when I moved here in 1981, when I was about six or seven, when the El Nino year, I believe, 81 or 82, this area would flood to the point where it was like a big lake. And my uncle and I and some of his friends would play football, and it was just a big lake because of so much rain. Right. Did you ever observe that? or? Well, we did at Rancho School. We had some mud football games, you know. Okay. and. Uh, and then also out in this area was our football field when I coached okay. in this area by the picnic area, okay. which was there before they, this all became part of the park. Okay. So that's kind of where we hung out. So let's let's go through the time of let's say after high school through about your year thirty, because at that point you were heavily more involved with the city to the point where here where we're at at the George House, you lived for 10 years as the caretaker, I believe, right? Yes. And when I played football for you, we always heard Coach O'Neill uh, lives there. And I always thought, isn't he scared to live there by himself? <laughs> uh, that would be really an interesting situation. You would roll up in your in your Z, was it? Yeah. Yeah. And I also know that you were a, a, a card dealer at a blackjack table, I believe, right? Well, I dealt poker. Okay. Uh, at the Texas Hold'em, mostly right. at the uh, Commerce Casino, L.A. Okay. Uh, for 13 years, actually, that was kind of part time. I still coach. I worked graveyard, then I slept, and then I went to coach. Okay. So let's take it from like 20 to 30 years of age. Uh, what were what was your involvement at that point, if you can recall, uh, officially for the city? 
Well, I first was uh, appointed or asked to be on the Neff Park Advisory mm -hmm. Council here mm -hmm. with all the things that were going on in the park. Right. It was before I lived here, a right. little bit before I lived here. Right. And then also I was on the City Youth Activities Commission right. and the La Mirada Regional Park uh, Activities Commission that they had a committee which helped, we helped bring in the Frisbee Golf Course and the Park Course and I helped with the, the BMX. At, uh, That's right, at BMX. The, the bicycle motocross at La Mirada helped bring that in and find the location and everything like that. Did Neff Park at that time, <clears throat> excuse me, have any form of a racetrack or a BMX? Because I recall as a kid going off my bike off of a ramp over there by the border yes. of Rancho. They used to come here, the kids. It was kind of a. Uh, it came from like Hollifields where I started the track. I was part, that was part of uh, Southeast Park District as well. Right. And then before La Mirada track, the the kids would make their own track here at Neff Park. I didn't think this was the ideal place for a track, of course. I would but have been one of them they, at that time. Yeah, you were one of them, and, and of course they had a little track here over by right. the by the mansion. I right. Think. Right. Right. And yeah, I remember when they did that. Now, with respect to let's go into your coaching time because again. I played for you for one year. You were a coach for La Mirada football for many years. Mm -hmm. You were also an umpire within the city for baseball. And were you also a baseball coach? I coached baseball at La Mirada High. Uh, Tony Carreni, who was the head baseball coach yeah. then, brought me in to take the freshman team okay. in about 95. They had done away with it for many years and they brought it back and he asked me to coach a freshman. So I did the freshman for a few years, then the JVs, and help get the guys ready for him. So within like maybe three minutes, if possible, I'm not gonna ask any questions now, but I want you to go ahead and just kind of talk about, from your heart, all that time about coaching and your involvement with the, the high school sports, etc. cetera. Sure. Uh, I just love coaching. I believed it. I was sent to this earth to, to be involved and help youth. And I love coaching and I really researched it. I went up to all the clinics in the area and tried to do the best job I could uh, based on my experiences and based on what people had told me. So I started coaching my first year of coaching tackle football with La Mirada Lords. And then I coached, I coached with Jim Martin and then I coached with Don Gothier, who was a great man, unfortunately passed away a few years ago. He was my coach as well, freshman year. Yeah, I think you played for both of us. Mm -hmm. uh, Don and I, we mm -hmm. had the Kings. Well, for a couple of years, we coached the La Mirada Kings, mm -hmm. Pop Warner, and also the high school freshmen. Mm -hmm. So I coached with Don until 1990, and then I took the JV team. Mm -hmm. and, well, before 1990, I have assisted with the varsity for a few right. years. And then me and Goody switched. He was coaching the JVs, and we flipped. And I wanted to be a head coach and an offensive coordinator. So I went down and took the JVs, and I had the JV team from 90 to 2004 right. at Lumber High. <clears throat> you had an undefeated season? We had a number of them. Okay. In fact, I think our worst record was 8-2. and two. <laughs> right. But we had, uh, yeah, we had eight undefeated seasons, I think, in there or something okay. like that. We, we had a number of them. Okay. I'm going to transition now to, um, before I talk about this piece of land, which is Neff Park today and the George House, um, you also owned a business here for some time. Yes. Uh, I opened a baseball card shop right. with an arcade and pool tables and a jukebox and, and it was a lot, we had a lot of, a lot of business. Mm -hmm. and, and then I opened another store, it was in a Vendome Liquor, I don't know if you remember, I think it was called Vendome, up I, on, I recall that uh, on the mall, okay. where, about where Starbucks is now over there. Okay. And um, so I, I had both stores at one time, mm -hmm. but the main store was on Alondra by the liquor store there. And, and I, I rented that building in the back and I completely redeveloped it. And that went for about five years I had that store and until hockey went on strike and baseball went on strike at the same time. Got it. So then I closed it up at that time. And then also there was a time where you ran for council for La Mirada as well. Um, what was that like? Uh, that was very interesting. <laughs> I learned a lot and, and I wasn't that much into politics, mm -hmm. but uh, in 1978 I ran for city council. Mm -hmm. There was a number of people that ran. Mm -hmm. I was 22 years old, so I... I uh, 22 years old. Wow. But I was, we had a good grassroots campaign. Pete mm -hmm. Dames was involved and some of the, Mr. Cardenas was my campaign manager, Al okay. Cardenas. Okay. And, um, and, and we came, we were in the finish like in the middle of the pack, you know, I gave it a go. 
and uh, it's with, on very little money. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to do things for the community, and I wanted to be the best community could be because it gave me so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I didn't make it, but they did ask me to come back. But by that time, I got a good job with the city, mm -hmm. and within Parks and Rec. Before I transition over to uh, the George House and your time here in Neff Park, is there anything else that um, that you'd like to cover uh, that I didn't bring up or you didn't mention yet? Well, I'd like to say that uh, you know I, I'm, I was happy to be a part of this community, and 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 I had a lot of mentors along the way. I had a lot of coaches and great Sam Cartelli, Little League coaches and. Pony League coaches and people like Arvel Goodman, who was the only athletic director Neff ever had, and then he came over to La Mirada, mm -hmm. and uh, I was in his PE class. He coached me, and he coached with me over at, at, at La Mirada, mm -hmm. and uh, and so he was a great. And of course, John Mealy, very close friend. We still Your stay mentors. in touch today. These are these are my mentors, mm -hmm. and. Uh, there's just so many of them that helped me so much along the way, you know. We're going to go ahead then and transition this part of the interview to this actual facility that we're at today, which is the George House. Um, it's actually the first house that um, when Andrew McNally arrived um, from Chicago, this was the first house that had been constructed and uh, today it's referred to as the George House. Jack George uh, lived here for many years, uh, up until about, I believe, 1960, and uh, the house has been refurbished several times, etc. I'd like, please, if you can talk about your 10 years of living here. I believe the years were... Uh, 1980 to 1990, okay. where I actually lived in the house. Correct. Right. But I used to come over when I was young, and visit the people here, uh, Jack George's uh, wife and, and daughter, and there was a guy that lived here too that uh, that we got to know. Uh, but I know you want to move on. <laughs> no, no, no. It's um, that's all very good information. When I was a kid and growing up with other kids, a lot of times, again, wow, Mr. O'Neill lives there. Uh, isn't he scared, or isn't it kind of strange to live by yourself on a big piece of land? And um, more to the paranormal perspective, do you think he sees ghosts? Is it possible that he sees them throughout the park or at the Neff house or even here where he lives? We've been in this place to tour and it's really nice. It's, it's, it's got a certain era to it, of course, aura to it. But uh, I want to get your perspective from the man himself who actually lived here for 10 years, yeah. which to me sounds like a great gig, by the way. Yeah, I was, uh, I was lucky to, to be able to do that. Uh, and growing up, we heard stories about ghosts and stuff in the houses, which who knows, but there are actually spirits in this house. <laughs> you can say that. For I can fact. say that flat out. I've seen a number of things. And also, before they just had a claw bathtub here at first when I lived here, and until I rigged up a shower, and I used to go try to shower over in the mansion, mm -hmm. and there were spirits there. And I can tell you stories of. Both houses. I have a lot. Tell, us, tell, <laughs> tell, tell I mean, us within about a five-minute window for now. Okay. What what you uh, can recall? And I've told some people, but I didn't really, you know, I didn't really get it's it okay. spread it out there. But there are witnesses to things that happen in this house. Okay. Uh, I'll first tell you that story when I when I uh, first moved in. Before I rigged up a shower, I would go shower over there because I had the keys. I was the caretaker of the property, so I had the keys. So you would go to that big house. I would go to the yourself. big house. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't worried about anything about that, really. Okay. But uh, I would go over there and shower, but the spirits there did not want me there. I found that out, okay? There, when I was there, there was a, a strong egg stink smell, like a bad egg smell, and and I, that I couldn't hardly stand. They would move my stuff around, like I'd bring my stuff to shower, my clothes, and my toiletries and that, and they would be like, in different places. Physically moved. Physically moved. Physically moved. You didn't dream this. You no. saw it. You no, no, no you dreaming it. here. Wow. <laughs> what That's I'm telling impressive. you is actual experiences I've had in that house and this house. And so that lasted about two days that I tried that. So I never did that again. I rigged up a shower in this house. In this house, there were apparitions that, that I would see uh, up and down the stairs. You'd hear doors. You know, you'd hear the normal things, something like that. I, I've, I, I've, there was some specific instances early on when I was living here. I tried to rig up a, a light, and 
I stacked chairs up on a table and I spliced into a live wire and I went down flying everywhere and hit my head, the back of my head. And somehow I thought I was dead, but somehow I ended up outside. So I don't know if that was involved with any kind of spirits, but there was people out here that tended to me. Uh, it was, and then after that, it seemed like more things, more different, different things happened. I can go down the list. <laughs> yeah, go down the list. It's okay. It's okay. We have okay. some time. Go down the list. Um, I had a friend over. We had gone out and had a few beers that I coached with one time. And uh, he came and he said, I'd, I'd rather crash at your house, you know. And I Here. Said, I have a couch. Yeah, and I, my bedroom was upstairs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he stayed down on the couch. And uh, in the middle of the night, music came on. The TV was coming on and off. I said, well, you know, at this time, I wasn't real sure what was going on. This was early on when I was staying here. And, uh, so it, he didn't know. He, he said, I'm getting the heck out of here. You know, he was really, he saw the TV and snow and off. And I said, and then come on and off and the, and the stereo. And that wouldn't blasting. scare you at all? It wouldn't make you think I well, should leave? I wondered, but I always knew stuff went on here. I, like, for when, once it started happening, and it seemed like they didn't bother me. Nobody bothered me. They sometimes bothered people that came over. But and 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 I tell people, I said, you know, you might see something, you might not. And in fact, I, there's two people I want to contact to see that were here. That, that you know what they saw and what they didn't see. Uh, still to this day, like the guy that lived here after me. I was wondering. I, I understand there were some Biola students that lived here, a group of guys for a little while. Were you aware of that? No, I wasn't even aware of that. No. I'm, if, I, if somebody were to ask me today, Raymond, uh, will you stay the night in this house by yourself one night, I'd be too scared. I, I don't know how you did it. I, I, I have tremendous respect for your ability to handle that. So when you would go to bed at night, you didn't hear or sense on occasion you would? Or oh, yeah. No, every night I heard, or once well, what, one thing about this house it was always, I even had a poker game in here one time and other people that played witnessed this too, about certain areas of the house would get like freezing cold. like. The house was cold anyway. There was no heat in the house when I lived here, but it would get like in certain areas it would get like really, really cold, and so everybody had to put jackets on, or I'd have to give them jackets, and then that kind of phase away. And that happened a lot during my whole years living here, where there was like real cold pockets, you know. In the it's house. interesting. Um, three different times I've experienced something to what you're referring to, and when I went to Tombstone to the Oriental Saloon, which is now a gift shop. Uh, I, I went to a corner where they told me to go, and they were saying that's where it's all the action is. And, and it was very hot in Arizona, right? But in that particular corner, it was very cold, yeah. very, very cold. And I looked around to see if there was vents or air conditioning or fans, so there was nothing. So you mentioned cold pockets that reminded I mean, me of the time. cold, yeah. That was very interesting. The fog breath. Right, but none of that, you just, 10 years. I, I never was bothered where they scared me or they frightened me. And uh, you never felt in danger, like in certain movies where something's chasing out. I uh, I had an intim intimate relationship with a young lady once. Mm -hmm. I was in bed upstairs, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, yellow jackets came into my room and stung the heck out of her. And didn't touch me. Bees. Bees. Yellow jackets came from somewhere. I don't know where. There might have been a nest somewhere, but I had no windows open or broken or anything like that. And of course, she was scared to death, and I was kind of scared. I was scared too, and, and they didn't even sting me. And so I kind of took care of her, and of course, she left and never came back. But uh, that was one instance I had. So, and then they were gone. Then the bees were gone. They were. Wow. At that time, um, did you sense you were at peace with the whole experience? So, like the people here, we we, we had some. Uh, some people here that may have extra sensory perception and the result was that McNally's family and the people here, Jack George, it was all good times. There, you know, there was nothing freakish really with respect to the history of La Mirada. Okay. Um, and um, their perception was that it was just good times. But based off what you're saying, every the, what you experienced was not anything that really scared you too often or too much. It was just no. you felt their presence, you knew something was here. I felt their presence at times, not 
all the time, you did, know, I mean, at times. Did you ever see with your eyes or hear audibly, audibly like, did you ever see anything running through the park at night or... Uh, I, I don't remember ever seeing that. Okay. I don't remember ever seeing anything like out the windows. Okay. I mean, okay. Uh, except people <laughs> that were in the park late at night. Transitioning to some of that now, um, without, um, how can I say, um, basically, well, what did, what did you see in terms of actual people here, the living, that would partake at the park at night after dark? Um, people would come in and they would sit at a, at a bench and maybe drink their beer or something and if there was just a couple and they weren't being loud because the neighbors were always concerned because this, this park is surrounded by houses, mm -hmm. their backyards. And so my job was to make sure there was not a lot of noise going on in the park. Um, you know, people would maybe be having sex or something in the park. Uh, were you but, armed? I was never armed. Okay. I was never armed. Just a flash, just a heavy duty flashlight. <laughs> and did you, I never felt like I needed to be. Did you ever feel alone on this piece of land considering, uh, you know, people that you know live so close by? Yeah. Did you ever feel lonely here? I knew everyone in the neighborhood almost. <laughs> I used to mow their lawns when I was a kid and, and I knew like a lot of people. Did they here. ever express apparitions or ghostly haunting feelings? as well or no one that I talked to except people that might have come into the house that you okay. know expressed a little concern okay. but uh, no not not outside there were like I said there were stories of growing up about that house and someone died in a big house and we one time looked for blood or something mm -hmm. but okay. nothing um, is there anything about Mark O'Neill that you'd just like to talk about that you'd like on film about, I understand you live in Las, Las Cruces, New Mexico today? Uh, yeah, 2016, I mean, sorry, 2006, I moved to Las Cruces, New Mexico, and it was a lady that worked with me at the Fairmont Private School where I worked for five years, okay. and I ran the summer camps, and so they relocated, she t asked me to come and look at the place, mm -hmm. and I went and fell in love with Las Cruces, New Mexico, but I've been back, I mean, uh, what was it like for you to come back here after being gone for so long or not as often? I mean, this is like a home to you. What's yes. the feeling like to walk on this land and to be here in the door that you used to for 10 years come in and out of? Yeah, I, I didn't use this door that much, mostly the side door. But uh, yeah, I, this has been just a, I grew up since I was five years old in the neighborhood. So that's been, how many years is that since 61. I left? And, and then uh, I was involved in La Mirada and every aspect of this city and, and this park was my base. I mean, from growing up here, working here, coaching here, working here, and the theater, and so um, this is the best thing, this park has been the best thing for me and, and I love coming back and seeing it and the changes that they've made. Okay. Well. Um Let's go ahead now and um, just take a look at some of the areas in the park. Uh, we're with Mark O'Neill and he's kind of taken us through a tour of the park. And Mark O'Neill, again, he lived at the George House here for 10 years by himself. And he grew up here since he was five. So take it away, Mark. Uh, of course, when I grew up here, this was not part of the park. The George House, they were still living here. William Neff was still living in the mansion and they had the caretaker here. Uh, who who died in 65 I think or 60 he died in 65 or 60 and this barn actually had animals in it when we used to come over as kids now we'd sneak over the fence sometimes and the and the gardener or, uh, the caretaker would would had his salt pellet rifle and he used to chase us out and we'd come and look at the, and they had chickens and different things and uh, and then they redid it, of course, you can see they've completely redone it. It was a theater for a while until the new La Mirada Civic Theater was built. It was the La Mirada Theater and uh, it was also the Park and Rec office. So I worked here and I coached here and used that office a lot. And then so we can move on and Mark, see the barn. Is this the original, I believe this is the original time from the McNally time of the 1890s. Yes. Do you know if that's accurate? This road is original. Um, and this is not, of course, the, right. the whole parking lot is new. When they started having activities, they started having weddings and so forth in the barn. And, and this was all added, changed 
later. And they did have like a lake here for a while. And they, a man-made lake? Fish, like, yeah, they, it was kind of a lake. And then there were problems because it was dangerous. I guess they had to fence it off and they didn't want to do that. So then they did this. They just put grass. So there, I, didn't, I never knew there was a lake here. Yeah, it was kind of like a lake in there. And was it always called the barn or was it referred to as the carriage? Because 1893. Yeah, we always call it the barn. The Neff barn. This is the Neff barn. And, uh, and that's what we referred to. So this says 1893. The George House says, okay, the, the George House was 1885. That's the first structure in La Mirada. I heard McNally. 1880. Maybe it was 85. That's what's there. And then this is 1893. That's the, when they built this. The carriage and the Neff house were built at the same time. The right. carriage, um, excuse me, the Neff house was a gift from McNally to his daughter. Exactly. Okay, so. That was married to William Neff. Right. Yeah. So That's what they named the high school after, by the way. Right, right. So what memories do you have here? Okay, let me tell you about this house. I used to give tours here. Mm -hmm. And and I used they used to have classes here, contract classes mm -hmm. with Southeast Park District, and I was like the the park guy here that would tell them where to go and and, and different rooms had different classes. Now down in the barn they had pottery class, then upstairs they had one room was guitar class, and then they had all these these different class cooking class. They had different classes that they had in that house before they really made it strictly a museum. I was never aware that classes were being conducted here. Yeah, yeah classes. Different classes were being conducted inside this house. And how do you see the trees in the park today? Do you, do you, do you recognize them as they were back then? or are there... Well, I think uh, most all are the same. They were. There was a lot more. I think they've some of them probably died and they probably mm -hmm. took them out. It Let's seemed go like there was a lot more bushes and trees than there is, but it's still all the ones that are here. We're here then, I believe. Let's go over to the gazebo, as well as the playground, because you mentioned your your childhood to some degree here as well. Yes. Oh, yeah. And you know, the city is contemplating, and I'm talking contemporary now, of taking all this out and putting concrete because of ADA compliance. And I personally, me, I would love the city to just keep it the way it is because yeah, it keeps it it's so much historical value here. I'd hate to see that, and it's not going to hurt anybody. They don't drive over here except for maybe just the caretaker of the park, and then you know for walking, you right. know, it's, there's a lot worse roads than this. The park that we see here today is not anything reminiscent of what it was prior to 1953, and definitely going back to 1880. Now, when you were here in the early 60s, growing up. I've seen pictures where, like you mentioned, a lot of this was shrubs and, and probably olive trees as well. Yeah, they, it seemed like they planted it that way to block themselves off from the park. Did you have to pay anything to live in the George house? No, it was part of my lease. I did a lot of things over here for them, you know, the only thing they needed me to do, but it was basically it was part a of great your, deal. It was, it was part, part of, of your pay structure package? Yeah, yes. Because to live here for free would be just, yeah. I was kind of kidding when I said I wouldn't do it. If it meant I could get free rent, why not? You, you know? try it. <laughs> Do you remember good times here as a child? Oh, great times. This is, man, we had every Saturday, we had activities all day. We always had hobo stew, watermelon feeds, and, and two days a week beach trips. When I got a little older, and I wasn't that old, but we had beach trips two days a week that the park district did. And we'd go down to Corona Del Mar. That's where we went. Do you remember a lot of good activity here? Oh, it was great. And then family picnics we've had here. And, and people came into town, you know, we'd have picnics here. And uh, then, of course, all the stuff we did with the parks, Parks now, and Rec. Now, when I was and, a kid oh, here. birthday parties yeah. when we were kids, birthday parties. When I was a kid here in the early 80s, I recall all this being lined with a lot of trees and yes. bushes. They, you see the they cleaned all this up because there was a lot of crazy activity going on here. Right. Yeah, it got, it got where people were inside the bushes and they were doing drugs and... That was part of my job, you know, to get them out. It was like a, just a couple people that weren't bothering anybody. I wouldn't really bother them. But if it got people doing drugs or if they were belligerent or making noise, that's when I would... But you were not armed? No, I was not armed. Just your flashlight. And in those days, they didn't yeah. have cell phones. No cell phones, yeah. I had the phone in the house. And wow. That was it. This was the entrance that I always came in because I lived right up this street here. Uh, and the, and the guy that lived there, I, 
we coached together here at the park. He coached the third and fourth graders. I coached the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. That was Wes Williams. Okay. He's an icon in this town. And he was a big tennis player, and he, and he hiked all over the world. I mean, he, he bicycled all over the world. And he was a great man. He died uh, maybe 10 years ago. And we went to, uh, Europe, we went to, to Japan, Hong Kong, and China together. You've been all over the world, Mark. Yeah. And then right here was an, a shed. It was about this wide and maybe eight foot long. A shed here? There was a shed right here. That was the park office. <laughs> It was before, like I said, before the barn was even part of the park. Right here was a, was a, uh, just a shed, and that's where all the equipment, the balls, the carom games. We play maze, you know, carom, all the carom game, and they had the balls, the basketballs, to play basketballs, and we checked them out, I think, and and then the, those basketball courts and tennis courts look the same. They okay. haven't changed. And does the house you lived in right here, the George House, for ten years, does does it look the same today? It does. In fact, it looks a little shoddy to me. <laughs> okay. I mean, they've done a lot of renovations on it, I know. But well, Mark, uh, I want to thank I want to thank you for your time that you've given us. And um, my name is Raymond Fernandez. I'm signing off, and I'd like to say, stay curious. <laughs> stay curious. <laughs> it's been a great, great visit. Thank you, thank you, Ray, for that. Appreciate You're welcome. It. You're welcome. Thank you.